there's quite a bit of legislation also around uh, financing campaign, campaign finance. Um, so money has always been part of the American political process. So for example, I think here in the brief, there is in the 19th century, even gubernatorial campaigns in Kentucky solicited contribution ranging from $5,000 to $10,000, which is amounts to about $270,000 today. And even in 1896, William McKinley is said to have raised and spent between six to seven million dollars, which is $180 million today. So this is not new. And you know, a hundred years later in, in 96, labor unions contributed over $40 million directly to political campaigns. And in 16, the total labor sector for political contributions was of $217 million in races nationwide. So that was on the open secret. So there's definitely, uh, you know, campaign contributions are, have always existed. So there's been a lot of legislation around it. And the first legislation was in 1867, the Naval Appropriation Bills, which prohibited officers and employees of the federal government from soliciting money for political campaigns from naval yard workers. And in the 1900s, allegations that corporation had exerted outside influence on prior presidential elections prompted the passage of the Tillman Act in 1907. And then after Congress enacted several more pieces of legislation, including a 1910 Federal Corrupt Practice Act, 1939 Hatch Act, 1947 Taft-Hartley Act, all of which established campaign finance limitations and regulations. And then these multiple laws were very difficult to enforce because there was not one single framework. So Congress passed the Federal Election Campaign Act in 1971 to replace the existing patchwork laws. And then Congress amended the act in 74 to set more limitations on spending and contributions and to establish the Federal Election Commission, which is an independent agency that really oversees campaign finance. So in the 1990s, there were several like perceived loopholes in the 1974 act, which prompted further reform. And in Congress enacted in 2002, the Bipartisan Campaign Reform Act, which is also called the McCain Fine Gold Act to address issue of advocacy. This is the advertisement that praised or criticized a federal candidate, but did not explicitly call for election or defeat of a candidate. And soft money, which are funds generally perceived to influence elections, but not regulated by campaign finance laws. So Megan, in your role, I'm sure you've seen, you've spent your career in fundraising. So this change in legislation you know, I'm sure has it had an impact as to how you fundraise and how you make contributions to campaigns. So you have some experience to share here? Sure. So I um, I started my career in uh, 2007. So the the most recent um, change would have been the the bipartisan the McCain Feingold Act, which you know would have been you know five years after the fact. And so a lot of the folks I was working with at the time I was my, in my first job would, would talk about the time before the McCain-Feingold Act, how different it was, how the good old days when, you know, you could, you could raise soft money for party committees and they were very critical of it because, you know, certainly on, on the right side of the ledger, I think folks thought it, um, it went a little too far and that maybe it had some unattended consequences of, of, empowering entities on the outside to have a larger say in, uh, in, in what was going on more so than the parties. So my experience was mostly hearing about the days prior to McCain-Feingold and how different it was. So I haven't known any other career um, so outside of, uh, you know, or excuse me, I haven't known a career prior to McCain-Feingold. Yeah, it feels like people are still talking about it even yeah. though it's really a long time ago, but it feels... Yeah. Because I, I think it was so, um, it made such a big change, you know, that I think the biggest thing that, that, that folks would talk about is how the party committees could no longer raise and use soft money for party building activities. 
right. and how that really took a lot of the and, and before McCain-Feingold, the party committees, so the DNC and the RNC, were able to play a much larger role in in election activities because they could raise more money and, and, and disperse it um, in ways that they're no longer allowed to now.